The first thing I want to demonstrate is I'm going to start with permissions. Okay. Permissions is the permission set on particular files or folders. So if I go into my temp folder here, I should have some files here. Yeah, I have some, a few files and some folders and things like that. And in the past, we have used the ls-l command to long list some of these files. Now, um, there's lots of information here, and I haven't explained all the information. We have looked at kind of this first digit right there, that first column or field. Yeah. Um, it was some of that information. Now we're going to explain the rest of the information for you because it all has to do with permissions. So we know that this very first column or this very first character here defines the type of, care of um, file that we're referencing, right? So if it's just a dash, it's a, it's a file, right? If there's a D, it's a directory. If it's an L, it's a link, whether it's a hard link or soft link, right? Um, and so forth, right? Those are the most common that you'll see. You'll sometimes see a C or something like that for a block device or something like that as well. Okay. Now, what are these other options? What are all of these telling us? Is that read and write? It is. It's read, write, and there's an execute. Okay. That's what the X is for. Read, write, execute. But you have three sets of them, right? So we have nine characters available to us here. And multiple read, multiple writes, multiple executes. And they always go in that order. They're sets of three. So there's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right, And it's always in every set of three, it's always going to be a read, write, and execute. If there's a dash, that means that that permission to execute is not turned on. You can't execute this like a script. Um, and we just kind of learned how to write some basic bash scripts, right? And we used to have to type bash and then the name of the script. Well, we can turn on execute so you don't have to type bash at the beginning to run the script. You can just run the, it like it's a regular program. So we'll show you how to do that. Um, now, there are three sets here. If you notice down here for directories, You'll notice the first set, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. And in the last one, it's read. There's no write permissions, but there's execute. Um, some people ask, well, why do you have an execute permission on a folder or directory? Well, that's a good question. Because you can't execute a directory it's not a program, right? You, it's not a file where you can put code into it and then run it. It's, it holds other files or directories, right? Yeah. Well, what the, what the execute permission on directories stands for is for any file within that directory can be executed. That makes sense. So if you have a bunch of scripts yeah. in uh, that directory, you can run those within that directory. It's that X allows you to run them. Right. And if you turn that off, they can't run, run them within that directory. It's, it's a hierarchical thing, right? Because the folder is above all the files that are in it. Okay. So let me explain why we have three of these. Okay. And I think I have a pretty good graph right here. Yeah. Here's a little picture. Hopefully explains it a little bit better. So the first one is the file type, right? We already established that. The first three sets that we have, first read, write, is the user permissions. The user is the person who created the file, who owns the file, right? And that's the permissions they have. So in this instance, they have read, write, execute. Read means they can see what's inside the document or see what's inside the folder. Mm -hmm. So if that read's turned off, they can't see what's inside that folder in this case, because that's the videos folder, right? If it's a text file, they can't read what's in the text file. They can't do the cat command and read it. They can't open it up in Vim and read it. It's blocked to them. They will get a permission denied for it, right? Um, now, read is usually turned on for most because it's usually okay to read. What you don't want is people changing your stuff, right? 
So you might take the right. right and away. that's what the right is. Yep. The right is for um, being able to change a doc. So if you have a text file, they can go in and edit it and make any change they want and then save it. Right. Um, so that's what the W is for. Same thing for a folder. So that's saving something inside a folder. If you want someone to be able to save something inside a folder, you have the W on. If you don't, you take the W off, right? And then you have X, which is execute. So if it's a script or something you wanna run, it's to execute it and run it. Now, like I said, the first set here is for the user or the creator, the originator of that file or folder, whoever owns it, right? And we're gonna call that the user. The user is identified in this first column over here. It's not the first column, but it's the third column over where it actually lists the name of the user. That's who owns it right here. So if you look here at my live example, obviously I'm in my home directory. So everything should belong to me, right? It's my home directory and my temp folder inside my home directory. So these first three here belong to Jared. Oh, and the dash, which is, is me space between, between the, the, the dash here. Yeah. Is that the, is nope, that that's the execute. Here? Okay. Gotcha. Sorry. So that means this book.txt is not executable. I can't run it as a script or a program. Right. So that's what this first one is for. The second set of three is for group permissions. So when do we have group permissions? Group permissions are usually used in organizations or businesses or computers where you have multiple people logging on, right? So in organizations, we might have, you know, the HR department, the accounting department, the IT department, you know, the sales department, the marketing department. And you may want to just set permissions for that department, right? So let's say you have an HR department that has personal, um, you know, employee information that not everybody should have access to, right. but anybody within HR should be able to read or write or look at that information, right? So that's what that, that second set is. It's for that group and you can designate that group to be HR or IT or whatever else. And you can set up those group permissions different than obviously the user permissions, whoever created it. Because maybe the person who created it, it's okay to change it, but everyone else in HR can only just read it, right? Just right. to be able to have access to it. And then the last set of three is the, um, sorry, I want to make sure we're recording. We are. Yeah. Is everybody else, other, which we just call other. So everybody in the whole world, right? Who else do we want to be able to read or write or execute to that, right? So those are what each three set, and the group, sorry, the group is defined here by this second option right here. So if you look at mine, now when you're kind of using it as a workstation, right? I'm the only one that uses this computer, right? right. It becomes a little bit more important when it's a server and people are sharing files or directories and things like that, right? We're, we're getting a little bit into system administration, right? When you're managing a server for somebody else or something like that. This is kind of a soft introduction to some of those concepts, right? Yeah. So this here's the group, but since I'm really the only one on here, it's you and Jared you. is the user, Jared is the group. But if you were sharing that, the second Jared would be? HR or IT okay, or, or, or whatever else. Yeah, let's see if we can look at a few others here. Mm -hmm. um, if I do ls-l, let's look in the Etsy file. And I don't want to see everything in the Etsy file. So we'll just look at the five or something like that. Oh, that's all root. So you can see. So here, this is a directory. Read, write, execute. Mm -hmm. Read, write, execute. Or read, no write, execute, right? The, the owner is root and the group is root. So the group can read and execute, but they can't write. Correct. That's exactly what it is. And everybody else can read. They cannot write, but they can execute. Anything That's within public. That. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can try and find, I should have. How about in your bin folder? User, oh. yeah, that's what I was going to go. User local bin. Most everything else around the system should be root or some other system. Um, directory. 
Oh, I only have one there. User. Maybe just user bin. Oh, still root and root, right? Um, yeah. I'm trying to find. Let's see. I don't know what groups I even have. Well, let me let me define this a little bit. The users, the users where users are kept as to what users are on your system, are kept in the Etsy password file. Just here, which I think we've used before just to kind of copy or pay. I think we did it when we were using a cut command. We used the Etsy password a little bit. Let's look at this. And this lists all the users here. And the, a lot of these are system users, right? Because there's not really a, a games user, but there is for a system um, that manages games. There's man, there's LP, which is like a printer user. Um, and these are these users are set up usually to run certain services. Those look like nodes, right? Um, if if you were in a network, they would be different nodes. Like, oh no, 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 no node usually no. has to do with uh, networking, okay. and uh, so these are just actual system users. So like, we assign anything to doing with like the print spool, like when printing things, we'll give it the LP user will be you know, manage all the printing stuff, you know, instead of root, it'll be LP or something like that. Um, if you want to look at all the groups that are on your system, that's an Etsy group. And you can see all your groups. And you can see here that there's an admin group and Jared is part of it. Right? Yeah. So that's kind of what that list there. No, I mean, um, I don't think I talked too much about those files, but it's good to be aware of those files and where everything is. I'll put a link in the chat and that, that yeah. shows uh, permissions and links. Yeah. And I don't know if that helps you. Yeah. Yeah. That works great. So those kind of help out a little bit with explaining it. There's the ID command, which gives you information about the user and what groups they're in. So for instance, you'll see I'm in the admin group, the CD group, so I can access the CD. I can do sudo, um, KVM, which is some virtual machines, the LP, which is printer admin. Anyway, um, Wireshark group, if you know. Anyway, a few different groups that I'm, I'm part of and things like that, right? And you can also do ID Jared if you want to look a specific user on a thing, and it should provide the same thing because I'm logged in as Jared. Um, so anyway, just, you don't need to know a lot about this you, more. You'll learn more about this and how to add people to groups and things like that. in the Linux two class, if you end up taking that. Um, but I just wanted to give you some, some foresight on that. The main thing you just need to be aware of are these permissions here, right? And that this represents the user. This represents the group, right? Uh, let's see, I could probably, I'd have to add a group. Well, let me see if I well, can. The link in the chat actually breaks it down if you want to share that. I don't know if you. I can open that up. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I'm trying to get to where, oh yeah. So here, this shows a different group, right? So staff, right? right? So you have Shum. And then you have someone in the group of staff, right? And we have permissions here at the college too, right? There's a, there's a student level. So right. if you want all students to have certain type of access permissions, and then you have faculty access to a certain level of things, right? Um, but yeah, so this is, this is a very good um, demonstration of an explanation of each one of these. Now, how do we go about changing these permissions? So that's what we need to know is, and let's see here. So I have this graphic right here, which helps explain this a little bit here. There are two ways in which we can change permissions, okay? There's kind of the alphanumeric way, the alpha, I don't know, letters, <laughs> so you call it, or there's kind of the number way. I'm gonna show you the letters way. And the way in which we do this is we use the, chmod command, change mode command. So 
let's change this book.txt permission. Okay, so I'm going to use the change mode command or chmod command, what people usually refer it to. And let's say I want to add other. So we have user, we have group, and we have other, which is distinguished with a U, a G, or an O. Okay. So this first one here is distinguished with a U. The second is distinguished with a G. And the third one here is distinguished with an O. So if I want to change this third section, which is represented by other or O, mm -hmm. I'm going to say O equals, or I can do O plus X. And then the name of the file, I want the permission to be changed to. So now they have. So now when I do, LS. Oh, I added X, not right. <laughs> I was going to say right. So I made it executable, right? Yeah, yeah. So I added X to it, but you can see I, I did O, which is this last section, plus X. Could you make it, could you go O, Chamad, O plus WX and make it right and executable? I can, yeah. So that's, that's a good point. Book.txt, okay. Yeah, so here, let me list that again. Let me go up and do that chamat again. Now, I'll, I'll go back and do multiple things here in a second, but I wanna show you how to remove things. So I've added the X, how do I remove it? Well, I change the plus to a minus. That's easy. Easy, right, plus to add, minus to remove. If we look at this now again, and we'll just look at the book one to kind of save space, you'll see that the X has now been removed. It's not green anymore, right? Uh, which our bash shell converts to executable files. It's now back to that. Now, as mentioned, how do we change multiple? Well, let's give it, let's give everybody all access. We want them to have write and execute access. So we'll do the chmod command mm -hmm. and we'll do other because we want to change the other section and we'll do plus and we'll do w X. You can just add both. Could you have done UGO plus WX? Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> That's okay. Ahead. You're jumping ahead, which is good. That's all right. So now I should have read, write, and execute permissions for other, right? So let me go back up here to the top and we can compare. Oh, right there it is. We have read, write, and execute permissions. Right now, as Eric was mentioning here, you can add multiple um, um, user or group sections here as well. So if we want to change the user and the group to also have read write mm -hmm. user group, so I'm now affecting U for the user, G for the group. So everything that indicates what segment this is yeah. is to the left. And then the actual permission we're changing is to the right. So does it have to be in the order UGO? Could you do it does not. It can be in any order you want. Okay, so it'll identify who it's for and what you're adding. Yes. But if you add something crazy, it'll just say give you an error. Yeah, let's try. Let's see that. Yeah, let's see if I add C. Um, it's like, I don't know what C is, right? Yeah. See, it's crazy, yeah. right? And same thing if you go over here and we do like I a like, Y. I meant like WX, WX. They're like, what's WX? That's, you know, that's just repeating. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it only accepts U, G, or O, right? And use a plus to add my. Now, what if we want to, so let's go ahead and, and change this again, because let's look at all the different scenarios that we have here. So now I'm given full permission, so anybody can read, write, or execute. There's nothing in this. I think that's just a blank file that I, you know, created with touch or something like that. But um, let's, um, let's mix this up a little bit, right? We can also, uh, well, let me correct this back. Let me go to Chmod. And I'm going to remove, I'm going to change um, the user and I'm going to remove execute on the user and you can separate things out by comma. So I can go comma and then for the group, I want to remove write and execute 
And let's say for other, I want to remove write and execute as well. I want that for book. So now what I've done is for the user, I've removed X and comma for the group, I've removed W and X and for everybody else other, I've removed W, X as well. And we can confirm that with our ls-l command. So as you can see, you can do any type of combination, you know, um, and you, you know, here I did two minuses, but what if I wanted to do, I can change this to a plus, yes. plus send those to a minus, you know, how, however you want, or maybe um, with group, I want to. Can I ask a question? Add, sure, go ahead. So, okay, you got your command, you have what you're identifying, you know, your, or your, so this doesn't work with everything. So you can't put like print F or something and then a couple of identifiers, comma, or, you know, the argument, I guess, is that U plus X is an argument. Is that right? Or is it an option? Yeah, it's a permission. It's, okay, so it's, you can't take that same comma and add it to like a few other commands. It just has to be for this specific one, right? Like each command has its own. Does that make sense what I'm asking? Um, I'm not sure. Like this is the syntax or the rules yeah. for Chamad. Okay, never, let me just. Yeah, yeah so, so each command kind of has its own set of rules or syntax. Got it. Yeah, and when we get to the find command, the find command has its own set rules. Like grep has its own set and rules, you know, for yeah. certain types of searches and things like that. And so that's what we're describing, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to give a few different um, examples, you know, of what this command allows and doesn't allow, you know. But um, so you can get pretty sophisticated, you know, and, and set up these permissions any way you want. Um, you know, so I can run this and there you go, you know, read, write, execute, read, write only and nothing for everybody else. Now let's, let me show you the executable one here. I'm going to, that file one, I'm going to create a small script. I'm just going to do an echo or something like that, just so we can see, um, whoops, that was supposed to be that. All right, so here's our program. <laughs> now, if we look at the permissions for file one, right, it's not executable. So I'm gonna make it executable. And, oh, and you can do this option. I do the shortcut option. You know, usually you, you can do a user group other or something like that. Well, if you don't put anything there, it applies to all three of them. Oh, yeah. So I can just do a plus X file yeah. one and then when we look at that, everything's X, right? And now I should be able to execute this program. Whoops, I probably have to do, I mean, I'm not actually in bash, so let's see if this actually works. There we go. Oh. I don't have to type bash at the beginning. Oh. What the dot forward slash means, it just means it's here in my current folder. And so now I've been able to execute this just by because it's executable, right? If I took off, let me take off the X and let's see what happens here. See if we could get some permission denied. Ooh, permission denied, right? Well, you know, so if you ever get permission denied, you know how to check for why you're getting denied, right? Um, you go, oh, this is not executable. Nobody can execute this. Right, so that's so using, go ahead. Using Shamad, uh, you can only change things that are within your purview, or can you like? Is there a pseudo that's going to get tricked where it says, "Okay, pseudo, you need to like have root user capabilities"? Or yes, okay, yeah. If you don't own it, you can't Shamad it. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was saying. Right. No, we need to make a shirt that says that. <laughs> yeah, unless unless you're root. And if you're root, then you can change whatever you want, right? So if you have pseudo access, 
you can change the world, right? You can do anything <laughs> to your system, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that's why you have to be careful and that's why you don't give uh, pseudo access to everybody, right? Only people you trust to know what they're doing, right? Because they can mess things up, as you can see, right? Yeah. So, um, so that, that's how you use Chamad using the letters. I'm going to show you the numbers, which is the way I originally learned. I didn't even know about the letters till later, but the, the letters are, seem to be understood a little bit more. But it's, it's not too difficult, but you do have to do some basic math. Okay. You learn the hard way to do everything first, it seems like. Well, I showed you the easy way this time instead of the harder okay. way. So I'm doing it backwards here because I really okay. don't care how you do it as long mm -hmm. as you know how to do it, right? So for the, the numbers way where you give it a three-digit number. So for instance, if I want to change, let me just show you, Chamad. Um, what's my permissions on this file here? If I want to add this to read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, execute, I could do chmod755 file one. Oh. Now, what does that 755 mean? Well, that's what I'm going to show you, right? And it's any three digits. It's, well, it's not, it's, it's seven is always the max. 777 is all permissions for everything. And 000 is no permissions for anybody or anything. Mm. All right. So how do I derive that? So it's from zero to seven each segment. Well, the seven, first seven is for the user, the first set of three. The second number is for group. And the third number is for everybody else. Now, what do those numbers mean? Well, each read, write, or execute is assigned a bit number. It's a number which is defined by a bit, okay? So the, every R is four. Wow. Every W is a two. So and every write. X is a one. So if you want to turn on read, write, execute, then that's four, two, one, which is seven. If you want read and execute, you'd only do the four and the one because this is turned off, right? So you don't do the two. So it's just four and one, which is five. Mm -hmm. If you just want read, it's four, easy math, right? Because you're not turning on write, you're not turning on execute, so you ignore the one and two. So read and write is six. Yes, <clears throat> read, write is six. So you see some files which are six, six, four, which is read, write, read, write, read. Mm. That's not too hard, right? No, it's easy. Yeah, yeah, it's easy. and. What the numbers I, I like about the numbers is you can do more complex um, permissions shorter, right? Because if you're trying to change like the user, the group, the other, and they all have different permissions, when you're using the U and the G and the O, you're going to have to separate those all out by commas, right? And it's kind of longer drawn out. But with, um, with the numbers, you can just change them really easily. So watch, let me change this to, how about 664? Six, we got four, because R is four, W is two, there's six. Executes turned off, so we don't count the one. Again, four, two, one is turned off. Four, and everything else is turned off, right? Makes it really easy, right? So, that is permissions, guys. That's how you set permissions.